Hi, I'm Iris Fritz, and I'm with Dunwoody College of Technology. I'm a math instructor there, and I'm going to continue to talk to you about circle relationships. And one thing that students have problem with, which is this idea of converting from radian measure to degree measure, and from degree measure back to radian measure. So first, what we have to do is establish some thinking. What do you know? Let's talk about what we know. So here's a circle. And if you've watched the other uh, videos that I've done on circles consecutively, you're going to be at a very good place right now to understand this next level. And then some of you who are coming in and you're maybe starting to learn a little more about this concept of going from radian measure to degree measure and back again, uh, should be fine if you know some of the basics. So I'm going to start to make a list of what we know. Now the first thing is I'm looking at a circle and everything that I'm going to talk to you about today is going to ba be based off of the radius. So as you know, half of the diameter is what we call the radius. The radius, okay, the radius is indeed, let me get my dot correct here, the radius is half of the diameter starting at the center of the circle and walking out. And we can use radius to help us measure something called circumference. So let's go ahead and talk a little more about circumference. I did do a circumference proof. I showed you where circumference comes from. I also showed you where pi comes from in the first circle video. And I want to kind of bounce back into that thinking a little bit and remind you of where circumference came from. And then everything that I'm going to do with you today is going to be based off of this way of thinking regarding radius and radian measure because they're directly related. So if you remember, we would walk, or if you will, the distance around the circle, walking around the circle has a name, and it is called the circumference. And circumference, using radius measure, is represented as 2 times pi times the radius, and this is something you should know. But if you remember correctly, I showed you where the ancients came up with pi. And so I would like to remind you of this because I think it's interesting and it is a way of really owning circles and starting to understand conversations that we can have regarding a circle. So if you remember, the ancients took a string that was the length of the diameter, if you will, two radiuses or two times the radius. So two times the radius is the diameter of a circle. And what the ancients did, if you remember back from this other video that I had done, they took a string the size of the diameter and they rolled it around the diameter and they found out that it went around once. There's one diameter. So again, diameter is all the way across. And that diameter length would go around once, it would go around twice, it would go around three times, and then they took their string and it always measured to being about equal to 0.14 the length of that, if you will, excuse me, the length of that diameter. And they called this unique relationship that was in all circles, whether very small or whether very big, that if you took the diameter of a circle and you rolled it around the circle, the distance around the circle, it would always go around the circle one, two, and 3.14 times. And this number was not exact but it was about equal to 3.14 times, and the ancients gave it the name pi. It is a constant number that is always represented, if you will, or always appears when you're playing with anything that is circular or later on cyclical, which would be then reflected into the sine wave. So if you look at the circumference formula that you would get in a book, I want you to notice that pi times the diameter is really truly equal to the circumference and that we have another way of representing diameter and that's two times the radius. Two times the radius is the diameter and the diameter always goes around the circle pi times. So that should warm us up a little bit and get us into later what we need to really focus on which is going from radian measure to degree measure and degree measure back to radian measure. Now, with circles, there's different ways to actually measure 
um, a circle. And I'm going to get my eraser here, and we're going to draw another circle to further our conversation. So right now, we know that radius is represented with an R. We know what circumference is, and I even did a little bit of a crash course with the proof of where pi came from. Anything circular as I get set up here, anything that has a rounded circular edge, even if it's distorted, like an oval, if you will, an ellipse, anything that is circular, cutting the bottom half and rotating the bottom half, that is cyclical, this is a sine wave. That is, if you will, distorting the circle again. Walking around this, the distance around these objects, will always have pi involved when we're talking radian measure. Now, back into understanding unit conversion. You know, having an understanding of what it is that you have to take in from any kind of classroom environment, starting to put yourself into the problem and really starting to own the knowledge allows you to take and transfer that same knowledge into distortions of the shapes, in this case, of what we're talking about. Okay, so looking at our circle, there are different ways to take measurements of the circumference of a circle. We can either, if you will, take measurements going around and measuring in what later on becomes radian measure, measuring with a radius. So that's 2 pi r in length. So the circumference here of this object is indeed 2 pi r. But there's another way to also measure what we call angular change of our radius. When our radius, if you will, if you will, is used to measure change outside of the circle here. And that's through angular measure measured in degrees. So two things we need to know. We can either measure with 2 pi r for circumference, or we could measure the distance around a circle in degrees. And all circles have, if you will, 360 degrees. So from that, I could start to talk to you about circumference in two ways. The circumference can be measured either by angular change in degrees, which is 360 degrees, or we could also measure circumference the way you might be a little more used to, which is in radian measure, 2 pi r. They mean the same thing. Two different ways to measure exactly the same thing. So now you're in a class, and they want you to start to take radian measure and change it into degree measure. Two different ways to say the same thing, if you will. And so I want to talk to you about that next. So let me go ahead and clean up some of this. And list what we know from what I just discussed. Radian measure, I want to give you some information, is simply measuring around the circle. The distance around the circle is measuring with radius or with a radius, okay? It's measuring with radius. Degree measure uses degrees to measure the same kind of thinking, okay? Degree measure measures actually from the center of the circle looking out and the angular change when the radius, if you will, is starting to rotate around the circle. So degree measure measures exactly the same kind of change, if you will, as we're rotating around the circle, but it is measuring, if you will, the angular angle change from the center of the circle looking out. So really what you're doing is you are looking at measuring the circle in two ways, either walking out on the outer edge in radian measure, 
with the radius, or standing from the inside, I always put myself in the problem, standing from the inside and looking out and measuring, if you will, where I'm at in degree measure. So if I wanted to measure this point right here from where I started, walking around this top part, I would be measuring it in what's called radian measure, sorry, radian measure. Okay, so you're measuring in radians, or is there another way? Yeah, I could measure, if you will, the degree change from where I stood and then how the angle changed to also understand this point, and that would be the degrees. So either way gets you to the same place. In fact, they are indeed equal. Now what you need to do is learn the conversion. So now after we have a feel of how to understand what radian measure is versus degree measure, in fact they do mean the same thing. And before we get into actual unit conversion with this, I want to make sure that we understand that 2 pi r, circumference of a circle, is indeed, if you will, the same as 360 degrees, just two different ways to measure exactly the same thing. And when we walk into, if you will, unit conversions, what we prefer to do is look at just halfway around the circle. So if I come from here and I go all the way over here, halfway around the circle, there are two different ways to look at this measure. Half of 2 pi r is simply pi r. So right here, I'm at pi r. And if I would finish going around the circle, I would be 2 pi r around the circle. 360 halved is 180 degrees. And this will be what we'll use for radian to degree measure to help us do unit conversion in the next segment. So again, if you want to make note that halfway around that circle is indeed equal to two, is indeed equal, excuse me, to pi r or a 180 degrees, they mean the same thing. So I look forward to you joining me shortly in part two.